Hello everybody, it's Jamie from World Shipping Lines and welcome back again to a Chapters of War video. Today we shall talk about the battleship, the HMS Cressy and uh, her fate in uh, World War One. Now first of course we're gonna talk about her design and construction. The HMS Cressy was a Cressy class armored cruiser built for the Royal Navy around 900. Cressy was designed to displace 12,000 long tons. The ship had an overall length of 472 feet and a beam of 69 feet 9 inches and a deep draft of 26 feet 9 inches. She was powered by two four-cylinder triple expansion steam engines and each driving one shaft, which produced a total of 21,000 indicated horsepower and gave a maximum speed of 21 knots. The engines were powered by 30 Belleville boilers. So, of course, the vessel would have had guns. And her main armament consisted of two breech loading BL 9.2 inch 234mm MKX guns in single gun turret and each fore and aft of the superstructure. They fired 380 pound shells to a range of 15.500 yards. Now, her secondary armament of 12 BL 6 inch MK V2 guns was arranged in casemates amid ships. Eight of these were mounted on the main deck and were only usable in calm weather. A dozen quick firing GF 12 pounder 12 CV teen guns were fitted for defense against torpedo boats. Eight on casemates on the upper deck and four in the superstructure. The ship also carried the also carried three three pounder Hodgkins guns and two submerged torpedo tubes. The ship's waterline armor belt had a maximum thickness of six inches. Cursey, named after the 1336 Battle of Crissy was laid down by Fairfield Shipbuilding at the shipyard in Govan, Scotland on 12 October 1898 and launched on 4 December 1899. After finishing its sea trials, she passed into the fleet reserve at Portsmouth on 24 May 1901. Now let's move on to her early life of this fine battle cruiser. Yes, she was commissioned by Captain Henry Tuto for service on the China Station on 28 May 1901. But her departure was delayed for several months when her steering gear broke down shortly after leaving the base and she had to return. She eventually left home waters in early October 1901 arriving at Colombo on 7 November and then at Singapore on 16 November. She was assigned to the North, Afri North America and West Indies station from 1907 through 1909 and placed in reserve upon her return home. The ship was assigned to the 7th Cruiser Squadron shortly after the outbreak of the First World War, in August 1914. The squadron was tasked with patrolling the Broad 14s of the North Sea in support of a force of destroyers and submarines based at Harwich, which protected the eastern end of the English Channel from German warships attempting to attack the supply route between England and France. She was also in the Battle of Helgoland Bight on 28 August. And now we shall sadly move on to her sinking. 
On the morning of 22 September, Crazy and her sisters, the Ab Abukir and Hoach, were on patrol without any escorting destroyers as these had been forced to sneak shelter from bad weather. And I can understand why, you know, bad weather, but I mean, if you look at the Cressy, sure, she is a battle cruiser, but she is not a battleship. I mean, she's not a battle, battle vessel like warships. I mean, she, she, I don't think she can stand much fire. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but the three sisters were steaming in line abreast about two thousand yards apart at the speed of 10 knots. They were not expecting submarine attack but had lookouts posted and one gun manned on each side to attack any submarine sighted. The weather had moderated earlier that morning and Tanner Witt was en route to reinforce the cruisers with eight destroyers. But they were being watched from down below. U-9, commanded by Captain Lieutenant Otto Willingen, had been ordered to attack British transport at Ausend, but had been forced to dive and take shelter from the storm. On servicing, she spotted the British ships and moved to attack. She fired one torpedo at 6-2 at Abkir, which struck her on the starboard side. The ship's captain thought he had struck a mine and ordered the other two ships to close to transfer his wounded men. Now the Abukir began listing and capsized around 655, despite counter flooding compartments on the opposite side to right her. As Hogue approached her sinking sister, her captain Wilmond Nicholson realized that it, had be, that it had been a submarine attack and signaled Cressy to look for a periscope, although his ship continued to close on Abukir. As her crew threw, over, as her crew threw overboard anything that would float to aid the survivors in the water. Having stopped and lowered all boats, Hoke was struck by two torpedoes around 6.55. The sudden weight loss of the two torpedoes caused U-9 to breach the service and Hoke's gunners opened fire without effect before the submarine could submerge again. The cruiser capsized about 10 minutes after being torpedoed and sank at 7.15. Seeing her sisters being destroyed around her, Cressy attempted to ram the submarine, but did not succeed and resumed her rescue efforts until she too was torpedoed at 7.20. Wedigen had fired two torpedoes from his stern tubes, but only one hit. U-9 had to maneuver to bring her bow around with a last torpedo and fired it at a range of about 550 yards at 7.30. The torpedo struck on the port side and ruptured several boilers, scalding the men in the compartment. As her sisters had done, Cressy took on a heavy list and capsized before sinking at 7.55. Several Dutch ships began rescuing survivors at 8.30 and were joined by British fishing trawlers before. Before Treewit and his ships arrived at 10.45. From all three ships, 837 men were rescued and 62 officers and 1,370 rating lost. 560 of those lost were from the Cressy. And that is the again the end of a chapters of war video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, 
learned something from this uh, World War One tragedy. Um, I quickly want to thank all the subscribers who have subscribed to my account. It really means a lot and we are trying to reach the 400 subscribers and we are very close for which I'm so grateful. But if you have friends who like ships, ocean liners, warships, anything what has to do with an ocean liner vessel, um, please show them my channel. We are trying, like I said, to reach the 400 subs and like I said earlier, I can almost taste it. Um, so if you have comments or thoughts about, the, uh, about this story, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, so with that out of the way guys, have a good night or day, whatever you are, and we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye.